Hello and welcome back to the All Out Brits podcast, the podcast that brings you everything you'd expect from NFL podcasts, but from across the seas here in sunny old England. Uh, this week, it was a good one. We saw more points put up by the Saints than they're paying their quarterback in dollars. And we saw more injuries to big stars in the NFL than we saw the big star, Caleb Williams, throw touchdowns. So you know for a fact... We had a lot going on. And as always, talk about the good, bad and the ugly is the ugly man himself, Mr. Elliot Greenwood. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good, mate. Week two's in the books. Take two's in the books. And if you had told me uh, at the start of the season that after two weeks in the NFL, Joe Burrow, Matt Stafford, Lamar Jackson and Trevor Lawrence would all be winless... I'd have absolutely put a fiver on that, mate. And I would be a richer man because of it. Yeah. What a week it's been. Some really, really interesting storylines that we'll talk about later on in this pod, Taran. But yeah, what did you make of the week? And have you enjoyed watching it as much as I did? I did. I mean, they talked about it was one of the first or only ever games, times this season where we'll have 10 plus games on on Red Zone. The Decker wow. box. The Decker box. <laughs> it delivered. I couldn't keep up with it. Um, it Hansen really was a week of upsets as well. I can't believe all the <laughs> games that went on. We probably will dodge a few of the games that went on and, you know, we'll avoid it as much as possible. Uh, But it was a very, very interesting week. And that's what we want from the NFL. And that's what we expect. So shall we kick off, get straight into it? Where do you want to head? Do you want to head to Philadelphia? Do you want to head to Kansas? Where do you want to go, mate? Let's head to Philadelphia. Because for me, the story of the week was really Kirk Cousins. That final drive was so good that the NFL just put it all on the TikTok page. (laughs) They literally went, fuck it, let's put on that Kirk Cousins final drive. Um, And and what a drive it was. Mm. Let's be honest with you, mate. When you've got a a minute 30 and change left on the clock and you need to go basically the full length of the field, Kirk Cousins absolutely, absolutely delivered. Um, And to say as well, when that Eagles uh, defensive line sorry was pressuring him so much, they pressured Mm. 45%. Um, of the snaps where, where Cousins dropped back, he stayed calm and he looked really, really good. He completed yeah. 20 or 29 passes for 240 yards and two touchdowns. And of course, it was that big um, game-winning drive at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. What did you make of Kirk, bro? Because Atlanta Kirk Cousins looks like a really, really well a quarterback this week. Yeah, I think it was interesting seeing week one. Um, there wasn't too much confidence about him. Again, we're very sceptical with the fact that had a lot of money to a quarterback who'd just come off a big injury um, at his age as well. And then they drafted a first-round quarterback, which was kind of wild. There was talks this week that, you know, they might want to distance themselves from Kirko very early on. Um, well, I think we don't think that's going to happen anymore. <laughs> wow, what a game from him. And he got the ball to everybody. You know, Bijan got involved a lot more. Drake London got involved a lot more. And that's what we want to see. Cole Pitts as well. He's got the assets. He's got the talent. And like you said, we've seen him delivered. And he will like that. He really will. But on the flip side, it feels like Philly Nation's in an absolute meltdown. And you wouldn't think it. First game, you beat the Packers. Everyone thought that Philly, you know, weren't going to be too good this year. But all of a sudden, it's gone toxic, bro. And someone on this podcast might have predicted this a week or so ago. So, Mr. Oracle, let us know what you think is going on there. Well, for me, um, it was a complete flip of what happened for what was good for Atlanta. Um, Mm -hmm. The Eagles passing game was just really, really poor. Um, They they only um, got 6.1 yards per attempt. um, Mm -hmm. And it's now three interceptions for Jalen Hurts in two weeks. It's not good enough. Um, And they're looking to go ahead now, losing one of the main receivers in AJ Brown. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think they need to get Saquon more involved in that passing game, even though he did have an opportunity to kind of put the game on ice, really, didn't he? Um, Big drop. Big, big drop from a big, big player, which you don't expect. Um, my hope is, as a Cowboys fan, they keep losing games of football because I really do not like Philadelphia. I've not yeah. made, I've not made that quiet either. Um, I really do not like the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they've been far too much of an entitled franchise for too long. When really they are a dog franchise. Let's not beat around the bush. Um, but I don't really know where they go from here. I think, like I said last week. The offensive um, coordinator, um, the head coach and the quarterback need to be more on the same page. And yeah. that's the only way that they can turn around after this kind of dodgy, dodgy looking week two. 100%. And I think it's it's kind of a team in transition, it seems. I know everyone keeps talking about the big loss of Jason Kelsey. I don't know if we kind of saw that. Um, and then the absence of players like AJ Brown, like you mentioned. Um, and like you said, you need to be able to trust the players you've got going around you. Um, and you need them to deliver. You know, Saquon on that third and three, that's a big, big play with so little time left on the clock. Um, and that could have changed the fate of the game completely. I think their win probability was in the high 90s 
um, going late, late into that fourth quarter. To, for them to throw it away says uh, a lot um, about the, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, but should we head to another team who looked like they probably had a win in their grasp, quite surprisingly, in the Cincinnati Bengals. Joey Burrow comes back, and I'll tell you what, he looks like the Joe Burrow of all for parts, um, but they couldn't come away with the full result. And I know a lot of uh, the Bengals fans aren't too happy about that because Patrick Mahomes was saved again, wasn't he, Mr Greenwood? He was. And one thing that I would say about Joe Burrow, mate, and obviously this is this this fixture, this matchup, looked on paper like it was going to be an absolute air assault. You've yeah. got, on one hand, Joe Burrow, who really hasn't been that great of a quarterback since 2022. Mm. Um, but obviously, we know the talent that he's got and we know how good he can be. And on the, on the other hand, of course, Patrick Mahomes, who is Patrick Mahomes. But really, it was the rushing attacks and it was the ground game um, that kind of won the game for the for mm. the Chiefs. Um, that Chiefs own line, for a change, absolutely dominated on the ground. They got 149 total rushing yards. Um, and on the flip side of that, Zach Moss um, was very, very poor. He got 2.8 yards per attempt. Yeah. Um, one thing I would say, though, like we mentioned, Joe Burrow, he hasn't been that guy for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Since kind of coming off that 2022 season where he was electric and he got them to the Super Bowl, yeah. he's been 5-8 and eight as a starter. He's playing more like a Garda Minchu than a mm -hmm. than a Josh Allen, in my opinion. Cool. Um, when, when, when analysts and when people who know the game look at the best quarterbacks, they go Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, for me, is starting to fall out of that tier. I love Joe Burrow. I absolutely love him. But he's got elite weapons and he's not utilising them. I really think this is a make-or-break season for Joe Burrows because he's on a lot of money and he's not performing as a $55 million quarterback. No, I 100% agree. I think, obviously, there was a lot of talk about him you know, struggling this year and I think we kind of saw that in the first game. Comes back better. Um, I think a big part of it as well is Jamar Chase only had four targets in the game. That is your big... Big star. That's a man that you've played with in college. That is your go-to guy. And I think that is not what you want to be seeing, especially from someone as good as Jamar Chase. But on the flip side of it, he's got a tight end, a new addition in Mr. Mike Kosecki, who's getting crazy amounts of targets and crazy amount of yards, which on the flip side, if we look at the Chiefs, what is going on with Mahomes and Travis Kelsey? He's had the lowest amount of targets, lowest amount of yards in the first few games of the season. Let's flip it over to Kansas offense and talk about what on earth is going there at the moment. I think what we're seeing isn't kind of unique to Kansas. I think it's a, a kind of a broad spectrum in the league this year. The teams that have done well, the teams that have looked really, really, really good and have scored as such are the teams that get the ground game going. Mm -hmm. I think we're moving away from an era in the league where, which is a pass-heavy air attack and we're going towards more of a Russian attack ground game um, sort of variant. And that shows in the past few years, the average passing yards per game has come down. Um, mm -hmm. Even though the NFL and Roger Goodell has put friendly rules in place to kind of maximise um, quarterbacks and, and the air attack, it seems that to be successful now, you have to be able to run the ball. Um, and really, those teams that can run the ball are scoring big, big points. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see more of this. We're going to ask more questions. But looking forward for the Chiefs, Isaiah Pacheco is going to be out um, yeah. for a few weeks as well. So we'll see, interestingly, how how their ground game evolves with him mm -hmm. missing uh, from their rushing attack. Why do you think they use the the ground games as much? You know, I, I feel like it's this sense of jeopardy. Like we talked about INTs before and you've talked about Jalen Hurts, for example. You know, INTs can really cost games. Do you reckon that part of it is... You know, if you run a ball, maybe the worst you can come away with is a fumble, maybe some negative yards. But normally when there is a fumble, it stops dead on the spot because players are pretty much all around it. Whereas an INT, you know, it could be 20, 30 yards down the field and they run it 60 yards back to your end. You know, do you reckon that's kind of part of this mentality of running the ball forward? You know, with the Niners, for example, they have really focused on the ground game, part of the McCaffrey edition. But even now with Jordan Mason, there's this emphasis on run the ball first and then pass if you need to, essentially. I would disagree there as a slightly, mate. I think from, okay. from from what I from what I take away from the Russian attack is the Russian attack should should start your passing attack. Your mm -hmm. Russian attack opens up the areas of the field that you'd like to throw to. Um, mm -hmm. If you can get more man in more men in the box to defend the uh, to defend the run, mm -hmm. then it opens up more space for your big receivers um, in the passing game and on the outside they're more likely to match up one-on-one. -on -one. There's less yeah. likely to be zones. Um, and, and if you pack him more men in the box and you've got a decent offensive line, if mm -hmm. you 
break one tackle, as a rusher, you're gone. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, really, I think we are going back to that. And one team as well that um, kind of, if, if we look at if we look at last week, um, who haven't had a fantastic rushing attack despite the additions that they made is the Baltimore Ravens um, yeah. and their game in, in Las Vegas, really. Um, obviously, they've added Derrick Henry into the fold and Lamar Jackson himself is a fantastic rusher. But what is it about this season and what is it about that game against Las Vegas where mm-hmm. the Baltimore Ravens just haven't been getting it done? It's very surprising because I think, again, the Ravens last year were touted as probably one of the best units teams that we'd seen and they didn't have as many assets that people probably would you know, recognise. They've added a few more to that. You know, Derek Henry, um, probably the biggest one that they've added in. And like you said, you'd have expected a lot, lot more. Um, what I saw in that Raiders game is what I saw um, in the AFC Championship game, where as soon as people get onto Lamar, as soon as that pass rush comes, as soon as that front comes, he just struggles. And it just seems like he panics. And you wouldn't think that someone as composed as him, you know, as skilled as he is, the ability he has with his legs, that he would panic, but he does. And, and, you know, Crosby just had an absolute day against him. He, he does against most quarterbacks. But last year, you know, um, it was it was Chris Jones that had the exact same sort of day out again. I don't know whether it's, you know, the playbook, if they're, you know, trying to re-sort of learn things. But going 0-2 and going 0-2 with the Raiders being that second result is kind of harsh because we know that the Raiders still learn and still evolving. Um, but on the flip side of that, you know, the Raiders were absolutely unbelievable to get the result that they did in the end. Devante Adams looks like Devante Adams again. Um, and Gardner Minshew is looking like Lamar. And Lamar is looking like Gardner Minshew. Yeah, literally, bro. And, and I think as well, um, it, Minshew Main has returned. I, I really oh, yeah. do think that. One thing that I think did cost Baltimore was penalties. They gave up yeah. 11 penalties in that game for 109 yards. 109 yards is, your, is usually a fantastic game for a receiver or a running back. Yeah. You don't point. want the refs to be responsible for 109 yards or taken yeah. away. But on the flip side of that, you mentioned Devontae Adams and Gardner Minshew. I thought Brock, Brock Bowers as well. The oh, rookie yeah. tight end was absolutely fantastic. Um, and those two, really, Devontae Adams and, and Brock Bowers, 208 yards together and a, and a touchdown. 10 first down receptions as well between them. Good time to be a Raider. And it, we've not had much time. We've, we've not said that very often. <laughs> we have not said that very often, but it looks like a good time to be a Raider in Las Vegas. It really does. And uh, yeah, we forget about the Jimmy Garoppolo era because the Raiders are enjoying themselves now and they're in a good old time uh, with Minshew at the helm. You mentioned Brock Bowers there. I feel like it's a perfect segue into uh, a bit of our fantasy talk because I had Brock Bowers and dropped him after week one. Oh, wow. Uh, and now it's looking like a bit of a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> Elliot, how did you get on this week in fantasy? I had to turn it around. I had to, after, oh, yeah. after the week that I had last week, losing to yourself, Saren. I went away and I looked at my team, really. I looked deep Mm. into it and I thought, what do I need? What do I need to pick up? And defensively, I thought, any team that are playing uh, either the uh, the Carolina Panthers or the New York Giants is a mm. good team to pick up on defensively. Um, but I think running backs, like I mentioned, running backs are going to yeah. win you leagues this season. We've seen your big-time wide receivers are no longer getting the big points that they got last season. Mm. Tyreek Hill's had a drop-off. CeeDee Lamb's had a bit of a drop-off. Um, but running backs are the way to go. i got J.K. Dobbins as well uh, on the waiver wire. And again, 20 points off him. That's back-to-back 20-point 20, um, 20 point weeks. And those, char- those uh, Los Angeles these Chargers look like a really, really good team. Um, but yeah, I got the win by 60 points. Yeah. I assume that you probably did the same thing as well, Tyron, going off last week where you bet down the, the, the projected Super Bowl winner. How, how was your victory this week? Uh, it didn't come, unfortunately. I think uh, Amazon must have lost it in transit, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think I've got a bit of a bad problem where I leave somebody out and they have an absolute whopping game. Alvin Kamara, 44 points against the Cowboys. Was well, sat on my bench having the time of his life with a cup of tea. Um, and I think it probably just cost me in the end. Um, it didn't help that Tua obviously had a bit of a concussion. Tyreek didn't really have much uh, of a look in after that. Um, but I think overall, I agree with you. Um, it feels like a year where you need to keep on chopping and changing things and actually yeah. making the most of it. I think the Niners D might have to sit a few more times because as good as they are, they are giving a few many points away. But yeah, the Panthers... Maybe a little bit of a change with Andy Dalton going in there. Let's talk about that quickly. Um, Bryce Young getting sat. I do feel for that. I really do. Um, does this mean the Panthers' assets go up? Is the Panthers <laughs> still a no-go? What are we thinking? I think it's a no-go. Do not touch Carolina with a 10-foot ball. <laughs> do not touch them at all. Um, 
I do find it really interesting sitting in because obviously they've hired a new coach this off season, and if you mm-hmm. got, got gone into those interviews saying I'm not I'm not a fan of Bryce Young, I think I'm going to drop him after two games. You ain't yeah. getting the job because they no. gave up a lot for him. They gave up 100%. so much to, to, to kind of get that number one overall pick and select Bryce Young. Yeah. I do think, however, that sitting him is the best thing for him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Andy Dalton's coming in. He's a, a veteran quarterback. He's played all over the league. He's played in he's played for the Cowboys even. He had a pretty, pretty <laughs> solid when he played in Dallas. Um but I think he's been put in to just show that it's a very, very difficult team. I think you could change a lot about that team and it wouldn't be mm-hmm. good. I think you could put Patrick Mahomes in that team and he would yeah. greatly struggle. Um, Bryson wasn't helping himself. So I think taking a t- step back and, and learning a little bit more about what how to be a quarterback yeah. in this league isn't going to do him uh, any disservice. It's only going to help him in the long run. What do you think about it though, mate? Obviously, Carolina, 0-2, only won two games last season. Yeah. Can they get a win coming up or, or or is it not on the horizon? I think it's one of those where, you know, I really do feel for the lad. I've said it about a million times, but it must be really tough going to an organization that pretty much had everything going for them, you know, not too long ago. They had some serious players, you know, Cam Newton days, even McCaffrey. Um, they had a serious, serious unit built. And over the last few years, it's been slowly but slowly picked apart. And Bryce Young's come in. Um, I think there was so much talk about him and there were so many different things that have just got on top of him. CJ Stroud having a really big year last year really didn't help him. Um, and I think CJ Stroud, again, just such a mature um, you know, quarterback. And when you look around the league and you see all these quarterbacks coming in, especially the ones that drafted in Bryce Young's year, and they're performing and you aren't, you can't get away with it. You really can't. And I think, unfortunately, he has been found out. I think they will get a few wins like they did last mm-hmm. year. Um, some very, very close ones, but I agree with you. Probably the best time for him to get sat. I think most likely he'll come in in a few uh, few games later on in the season. Um, but like you said, I think it'll be a good showing to see um, how this Panthers offense co- like copes without Bryce Young in it. Definitely, mate. And let's look forward to next week at two yeah. quarterbacks that we know are not going to get benched whatsoever. Um, and that is Kyler Murray uh, with the Cardinals and Jared Goff with the Detroit Lions. Um, yeah. I think that's going to be one of the games of the week. I really, yeah, really do. And, and, and two kind of teams where it could really go either way their seasons yeah. this year. Um, obviously, the Cardinals coming off a pretty poor season last year, mm. but they've started looking really, really good. Uh, Kyler Murray has started absolutely electric. He's out, he's yeah. pass rate in Tyron is just <laughs> over 122. He's thrown four touchdowns and no interceptions. How much has he impressed this the first couple of games this season? Absolutely ridiculous. I mean... In our division, watching them play has been absolutely hilarious because Kyler, just no consistency whatsoever. And we talked and laughed about the fact the only thing he likes doing is playing a bit of Call of Duty and that's it. (laughs) Um, But this year, he's put the controller down. He's probably played a bit more Madden in the time that he's had off and he feels like he understands the game a bit more um, and he is dangerous. People are talking about Jaden Daniels being dangerous as a dual threat. This is the dual threat. This guy... You know, we talked again about Ravens and, and Lamar and having everything, but still not looking composed. I honestly think that you could send everyone running at, you know, Kyler Murray and somehow he'd find a way through. And that's what he did against the Rams. And to be putting up that many points in the first quarter, ridiculous. Against the division rivals, they look like a serious unit. Marvin Harrison got involved. Trey McBride got involved as well. Um, I love the attitude of Marvin Harrison saying, you know, uh, Kyler had like three incompletions and there were three to me. That's on me. I love that. That's what you want. You want perfect yeah. games. You want perfect players. Um, I think this is going to be an absolute crazy matchup. On the flip side of it, Jared Goff. <sighs> he was he's very, strong. very lucky. He's really struggling with very, very season, hasn't he, bro? Yeah, I think uh, he's struggling without, I don't know, Laporte is not really getting involved as much. I know they've looked for Jameson Williams downfield, but throwing that many interceptions against that Tampa defense, I know they're good. But yeah, like you said, it doesn't look too great. What do you reckon? Jared Goff this year. Um, I think it's going to be hard for him to replicate what he did last year for Detroit. Yeah. He was like the talisman. He was Batman. He was coming back. He was saving his city. But he started very, very poor this season. He's thrown yeah. one touchdown and three interceptions, like you mentioned. And he's got a rating of below 70. And it is looking like Amon Ra St. Brown is going to play, but he is questionable with, with that ankle, yeah. ankle injury. So, obviously, for Detroit fans, hopefully he does play. But Goff really does need to get it going. And I think he needs to get that ground yeah. game running. Um. 
I do think it's going to be which quarterback performs better on the day. I think yeah. Kyle Murray's so much fun to watch. I'm going to start him in fantasy this week as well, bro. It's a good idea. It's a good I, idea. I see him getting some mad points. He just looks like, you mentioned he looks like he's playing Madden. He genuinely looks like someone's controlling him on the pitch, doing yeah. all the little juke moves and the spin moves. He just looks like he's having fun playing the yeah. game. And that's something that's really, really nice to see. And I think what's nice as well is they've backed him. You know, there was so much talk about them drafting, you know, uh, an elite quarterback. Um, and there was so much talk. Again, we didn't know whether they were going to pick a receiver, whether they were going to pick a quarterback. So to back him after his, all his injuries and his inconsistencies, he's come back and delivered. Uh, and if they can have a really solid year, with it looking like the Rams, uh, their division rivals, l- not looking too great, um, I think it's a very competitive division. Should we talk about the Rams as well? Let's talk about that topic? division matchup. Yeah, let's talk about the Niners <laughs> Rams, though. Big game for you. Obviously, the 49ers coming off that loss against the uh, the arch nemesis in Sam Dardold. Uh, what did you make of that game? What happened in that game that needs changing going forwards? And how do you see this one going against the the, uh, the Rams? I didn't want you to mention it, but you mentioned it. So, you know, absolute horror. Um, again, when you have assets, when you have players, you have to get them involved with every single franchise. Um, and I don't think Shanahan called a pretty good game, to be honest with you. Um, I think some of the decisions... Some of just the ideas that he had, you know, the big one I look at is the drive that, you know, Purdy put together at the end. You know, Jordan Mason could have easily bought us a yard and somehow he decides to play a screen to Debo, you know, just was not clever whatsoever. Now Debo's out for a bit, you know, it's a bit of a mess to be honest with you. I thought defensively, Fred Warner, I have never seen someone, you know, make the plays that he did. He did not deserve it. He's He's so good, isn't he? Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think people realise how ridiculous it is, like, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, but you can tell there's some rookies in that defence. Um, you can tell that it's still gelling together, you know, new defensive coordinators. Um, I think it's still building, but I'm glad got the loss out of the doors, early doors, not having to deal with us going 6-7-0 and waiting mm-hmm. for that loss. Get it out of the doors and just work on it. But looking ahead to this, the Rams looking big, big trouble. Losing wide receiver one, losing wide receiver two. Um, Kyron Williams doesn't look as effective as he did last year. Stafford doesn't look as confident as he did last year. It's not looking good for the Rams, to be honest with you. And I think the Niners, even though they're traveling, um, I think they're going to put an absolute show on here. And I think they're going to have a good day out. Um, What do you reckon, mate? I, I completely agree with you. As much as I don't yeah. want the Niners to win from your <laughs> point of view, I think it's it would be really unsensible of me not to back yeah. Brock Purdy to kind of bounce back in this one. Yeah. Um, I think the only way for me where potentially the Rams can attack is at is right tackle. I think your right tackle had a really, really poor game last week. Was it Colton yeah. McIvis? On, on the left side um, of the offensive line, obviously, you've got someone, a brick wall that you're not going to get past. Yeah. So you've got to go to the other side. And uh, and, and Colton allowed uh, five pressures, I believe, um, yeah. last week. And he looked really, really poor. Um, mm. So I do think if they're going to attack anywhere, that's where they need to attack. 100%. But that's it. That's it, because I think that Niners defence is so, so good, like you said. Yeah. Fred Warner looks an absolute animal. The only thing I want to see going forward from the Niners is they need to get Brandon Ayuk involved more. They've paid him so much money, and they're just yeah. doing nothing with him. Yeah. Uh, and maybe now Debo's out for a couple of weeks. Maybe now he's going to get a bit more of a showing and a bit more of a seeing. Yeah. But they really do need to find a way to get the ball to Brandon Ayuk. 100%. And I think as well, Brock... Everyone's been talking about him. He's looked a bit shaky. I'll be honest. He's looked a bit shaky. Good, is the it? pressures have been getting to him a little <laughs> bit. It just looks like, you know, everything I loved about him was he was on the move constantly. He never knew what he was doing. This year, he seems more like he wants to sit in the pocket and deliver these passes. I don't want that. I want Brock on the run, some play action, stuff like that. Because like you said, you know, that O-line, as good as it is on parts, it is a little bit weak. And we saw that against the Vikings. Um, and they really, really did struggle. Uh, and talking about a bit of a weak O-line, or maybe just a weak team in general, why don't we look at the Cowboys, mate? How about the Cowboys, baby? What on earth went on when the Saints came marching in, sunshine? Uh, mate, they didn't come marching in. They came absolutely steamrolling <laughs> through. Absolutely, great. Um, That game was an absolute template on how to beat the Dallas Cowboys. And it was nothing new, okay? It isn't a new format. It isn't a new mm-hmm. system that needs that kind of needs to be put up against, uh, against Dallas for you to come away with a win. It's get in front early, run the ball, and make that play from behind. Make that mm-hmm. make the plays. And we saw that Dak is capable of doing that. 
but you cannot be expected to beat 44 points. That that defence was absolutely <laughs> ran through by Alvin Kamara. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike Zimmer, obviously, coming from, from the Vikings, what he's doing, what he's doing, we've lost Dan Quinn, who was brilliant as a defensive coordinator, but we gave up eight yards per play. That is ridiculous. Eight yards per play. Our top scorer this season has been Brandon Aubrey. All right? He's our kicker. He's our kicker. He's got 28 points. He's got pretty over... Good though. He's yeah, pretty good. He's a really good kicker, isn't he? <laughs> but he's, we've scored 52 points this season. He's got 28 of them. Um, so what do I think needs to happen this week for the Ravens to beat the Cowboys? Derek Henry needs to run the ball. Lamar Jackson needs to run the ball. They'll go 7-0 up if they get the ball first. And then that's it. That's all that needs to happen. Maybe get the ball to Isaiah Likely and, Z- and Zay Flowers. But all you have to do against the Cowboys, run the ball efficiently, make that play from behind and make him make plays. Game game done. You've got a yeah. W in your win column. That is simple as that. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's else. not what you want from your uh, £260 million quarterback, is it? it it's not exactly <laughs> how, the way that I thought he'd start off his new contract. But again, it's another good opportunity to if he can beat... Lamar Jackson. If Lamar Jackson goes home free as well, this is one thing. There is a real possibility that Dallas can win that game. Mm-hmm. It is not out of the question. Um, because as good as that Ravens defense is, it's looked quite weak this season, bro. Mm-hmm. It hasn't looked as good as it did like last season. So I think if Dak can find a way to get the ball to CD, Jalen Tolbert's turn up to be a bit more of a number two, along with Brandon Cooks. Um, hopefully Jake Ferguson's back instead of Luke Shoemaker as well to make some plays. And if you can get the ball to those players, maybe establish a little bit with Zeke on the floor, there's a chance. But I do think the Ravens take the W in this one. What do you think, mate? Yeah, I can't lie. I think the Ravens, they've kind of put their problems together. Again, Cowboys always seem to have one of these games every single year um, where they just get absolutely humble. But for then, somehow, the game after and the games after that, they go on a really good win and run. So as much as I said the Ravens are going to put it back together, now I'm thinking... You know what? I'm going to take the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys <laughs> might come back with one. Yeah, just, we just boys. Um, but yeah, just I really, I've said it as many times. Dak for me, just always seems to have those games in him where he just just doesn't look like the man that you want. You know, he got the ball in CD's hands. That's what you want to see. Um, but I think it'd be very very interesting because if Lamar has a good game on the other side of it, you know. Dak has really got to try and compete with that. Um, and I think it's going to be a really, really interesting matchup. I think it's going to be all about complementary football, that one. And the mm-hmm. Cowboys have not been playing very much complementary football at all this season. Yeah. Uh, the defence is not making stops on third down. They're giving up mm-hmm. way too many yards. And the offence is often having really short drives. They're not giving yeah. the defence time to rest. I think get the offence rolling. Let's have long, sustained drives, 10 12, 15 play drives. Yeah. Uh, and then we can talk about the Dallas Cowboys being a Super Bowl contender. Well, we'll have to wait for that. And you know yeah. what? That was too much of a head spin of a take. I'm going to have to say head to the sidelines and have a breather. Uh, and let's get into our little sideline question then to round off. Uh, and I think it's a pretty interesting one this week. Now, the sideline question is uh, about ops and squads. Now, me and Mr. Greenwood here are known to have a scuffle you know, a verbal argument from time to time. But I tell you what, it'd be very interesting to see what would happen in the case of if we were, you know, at war, at beef with each other, and who we would have in our squads. Uh, And so we're going to pick from current NFL players who would be roaming around with, and then we're going to let you guys decide who you think would end up winning the beef. Um, And obviously the answer is my team. Uh, But we'll let you run. Elliot, give us, you know, a few ideas, who you're thinking, who would you want to pick? Um, I'll let you pick two players that you want to run with, mate. Oh, okay. If I'm picking two players, I'm looking at who I'm going up against. I'm looking at yourself, Taryn. You're Mm. not the smallest guy in the world. We need (laughs) someone who's going to match you. Let's get someone in there who can slap you about a little bit silly. Um, And I'm thinking, uh, I think I'm going to go Joey Bosa, you know. Um, Joey Bosa, okay. Joey Bosa. I'm thinking him, I I think he can swipe the arm down and kind of... Mm just absolutely demolish you. And on the flip side of that as well, um, I want a guy who's quick, who's still mm. powerful and can still pack a bit of a punch. And I'm going to go for someone that you're probably going to select. I'm going to go for Fred Warner. I think Fred if we get Warner, in, wow. he can dip, he can dive, he can get in there. Mm. I think he's going to absolutely cave your head in, bro. And, I, and, I, and that would hurt you. I think, yeah, do you know, I actually think you'd enjoy being beaten up by Fred Warner. Maybe, maybe. I, I, I think there'd be some luxury in that for you, bro, because he's quite good at the game of footy, isn't he? 
But he wouldn't stop me on third down though. So we'll, we'll <laughs> let it slide. We'll let it slide. Who are you going? Who's your team? I like team? that. I like that. Who's well, your team? my decision is is very difficult. You know, it was going to be based on the ethnicity of your players. So it eliminates a few. Um, as well in the NFL, there's, there's a few players with a bit of previous when it comes to, you know, causing a bit of damage, causing a bit of harm. Be careful, um, bro, be careful. Oh, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. We're tiptoeing, we're tiptoeing. Um, there's also a few that have done damage to their teammates as well. And so we don't want those because we want to be a unit. We want to join together. Now, you mentioned Joey. I'm going to have to bring in the grizzly bear then. Nothing better than a bit of brotherly beef. <laughs> Get me Nick Bosa. I'll have him there. He's going to run riot. He's going to run riot, baby. And I'll tell you what, I'll take him. I'll have that. Um, and on the other side of that, I think I'm going to go for another rusher. And I'm going to go with Max Crosby. God damn. <laughs> that boy comes and he don't stop and he'll hit you. And he's, he's an evil floor. man. He's an evil he's, man. <laughs> he's a different boy. And I'll tell you what, I think those two are side by side. They're not as big. They aren't as big. But i tell you what, it only need a little flick and a fart from one of us and you'd be out of the picture, mate. So I reckon... <laughs> Joey Rosa is not coping with the big boy Nick when he comes down. <laughs> I think, bro, the only thing with that is, I think Joey's got it. When he, when he comes to that brotherly love, that, that they've known each other for so many years. Joey oh, knows the way that. to get there's, the There's Nick. no love. Look, we've known each other for years and there's no brotherly love there as no, much as we try and pretend. No, you know what I mean? No. It's so, all for show. I think we need to... Who, who do you think, realistically, who's going to win that? Realistically. Me, obviously. On. Any team that I'm on is going to win. Let's be perfectly honest there. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm going to let you say what you want to say, yeah, but I, I, I just well, think... guys, you're going to have to let us know in the comments. You're going to have to settle this. Who would win in a scrap, in a three-on-three, in the street, Rocky Five style? Would it be Elliot, uh, Joey Bosa, and Fred Warner? Or would it be me, Nick Bosa, and Max Crosby? Let us know in the comments, um, and we'll see what everyone's thinking, because I think I, it's going to be a pretty fair fight. I, I'd pay to see that scrap, bro. I would pay that, to be fair. Let's, let's get that on the we'll people. Word with people you. Well, you never know. We're big time now. And uh, a final comment to everyone. Uh, we'd like to thank you for helping us to get a 1,000 followers on TikTok. If you aren't following us on TikTok, get on there. Make sure you are. We appreciate it. It's been a wonderful uh, experience and a journey. And we're really enjoying it. Uh, and we only hope that we can continue waffling and talking absolute nonsense. Mr. Greenwood, do you have any words to add? Uh, I, I just yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I know it's all your hard work, Taryn, has been really shown off on that side uh, of the podcast. On my side of the podcast, the YouTube, we, we, we're on about 55. So we will like we'll that. We'll, take that. we'll keep it coming, guys. When you see this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Um, we're going to aim for... what? Put, put a figure out there, mate. Put a figure out. Or, what, on this post? How many do we want? No, no, no. On the subscribers. For the end of this season, how many do we want? I want I want a hundred by the end of the season. He wants a hundred, guys. You got to deliver it. You got to deliver it. Uh, and as always, we'll continue to deliver, and we'll be back next week. Bring in the blitz. Bring in the house when we talk all things NFL all over again. Thank you, Mister Greenwood, for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time on the All Out Brits podcast. See you later.